Hi, Lyson, retired and living the dream. Today's video is going to be about the beauty of failure. The beauty of failure. Not many people talk about the failures that people have in lives and how you can make that into a positive. And today I'm going to give you some examples of my failures and how I've turned them into a positive thing. Uh, now, as I said, we all deal with failure in our lives and how you deal with it and how you move forward from it is the important message here. Now we all can remember riding a push bike and falling off it and how many times you've scraped your knees, scraped your elbows and hurt yourself but do you ever give up? Majority of people don't and majority of people end up riding the bike and thinking nothing of it for the rest of their lives. Every time you jump on a bike, as you learnt as a four or five year old, even at 60 or 70 year old, you can jump onto a push bike and ride it straight away. And it's the same things with life. If you learn from your mistakes, you can make it into a learning curve and you don't do the same mistakes again. You learn from your mistakes. So the beauty of failure. So I'm going to give you some examples now of my failures and I'll give an example a little bit later on about my biggest failure and I found that was my biggest learning curve and my biggest lesson in life which I learned from it. So the majority of people who follow my channel know that I've been married four times, I've been divorced three times. So do I count them as failures? No I don't. I don't count my marriages as failures, I count them as I've learned something and I've moved on from that and hopefully you don't make the same mistake. Now the three wives that we ended up parting and getting divorced from, um, they were all different. It was never the same fault why we got divorced. I'm not going to go into the reasons why we got divorced, but let's just say we decided to move apart and get on with our lives separately. Now I've got no malice against my ex-wives. I just I said to every one of them, I said, if I didn't make you happy, well then please go and find somebody that makes you happy and live the rest of your life in happiness. And I've always moved on from that. Did it hurt? Of course it does. Anybody that goes through a divorce and financial settlements and losing a lot of things, it hurts everybody by going through this process. There's no easy way out of divorces really. Lots of people say that they came to an amicable agreement but it's the build up to that divorce. Everybody goes through a hard time. It's never the same as when you first meet somebody. Getting divorced is an awful, horrendous thing. So the beauty of failure. My first failure that I've got to turn around and say is my first marriage. Now I've got to say, you've got to go with your gut feelings with a lot of things in life. And my gut feeling was, I wasn't doing the right thing. I was young, stupid, naive at 22, 23 year old to get married. Even my best friend at the day I got married said to me, Les, it's never too late to walk away. So he could see also that it wasn't for the right reasons. But I suppose it, it became of guilt and fear of going down that far that you don't want to let other people down and look it upon as a failure. So we got married and several years later we got divorced because I found that the child that we had wasn't my child. So the failure was, in this episode, was I should have walked away. I had the gut feeling something wasn't right. But whilst we were married, until I found out that my son wasn't my son, we sort of had a, a good living standards. And then I found out that the child wasn't mine and the fact that she was in debt. So the big learning curve from that one is go with your gut feelings. So that was failure number one. Failure number two, she was a lovely girl. And as I say, we got married and she had nothing, but I always had the spirit of working and providing and being a good family man and taking care of my wife and my children. And so we had a couple of kids and I just wanted to make life much better for both of us. So I was prepared to work. Um, so she didn't have to work. So she packed in a job, so I took on more responsibility and work. And I worked very, very, very hard to be able to support my wife and two children. Now again, circumstances I'm not gonna go into here. Um, we ended up getting divorced. So I was always a bit of a risk taker. And I got offered a, a place on the self-build scheme. And the first house that I, that I built, it took me almost three years to build 
through a self-build scheme where there's a number of people building houses and for that first scheme I made £35,000 profit. So £28,000 of this went to the deposit for the house that we lived in. We couldn't afford to live in the house that we built because of the mortgage would have been much, much more, but we used that profit to be able to buy the other house and live a more comfortable lifestyle. So a couple of years later, I got the opportunity to join another self-build scheme while well, I was all excited because I'd, I'd made £35,000 in this first venture that I did. And my wife at the time kept telling me, no, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't, I don't want you to do it. You're going to be ending up working for three or four years. And my bigger picture was, yeah, OK, three or four years, and if we made the same amount of money again, we'd be debt-free, mortgage-free. So I sort of ignored what she was telling me not to do. She didn't like me doing all the other jobs as well, but she liked counting the money when the money came home, and she liked the fact that she didn't have to work. But on a couple of arguments that we had, I said, well, you go back to work and I'll, I'll not do all of the jobs. And she said, no, I want to stay at home. So you can't please everybody all the time. So that was sort of the cracks that were starting to appear. Now, unfortunately, on the second self-build scheme, it's when the, the crap hit the fan sort of thing and the interest rate shot up to almost 15% and the house prices plummeted. So almost four years... And I would have ended up at the time with a £150,000 mortgage at 14 or 15 per cent, which is absolutely incredibly stupid if I'd have done that. But I was three months away from the scheme finishing, and I was prepared to just walk away and just count it as a okay, it's one of them things. But thankfully, the, the site foreman seen what the position that I was in, and he pulled a few strings and he pulled in a few favours, and to cut a long story short, we managed to sell the house for £6,000 more than it cost me to build. So almost four years in building, and I came out with £6,000. Better than nothing, I suppose, but at the end of the day, it was a stressful and horrendous situation to be in. So that was failure number two. So what did I learn from failure number two? The knowledge I gained through building my own house over them four years was immeasurable. I became proficient at doing a lot, a lot of things and I knew this was always going to save me money in the future. So that's where I learned from that. I got so many times from my, from my wife at the time, my second wife, saying, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. And, but... I took the risk, and on that particular occasion, it didn't, it didn't work out as I thought it was going to do. But the knowledge I gained from there was brilliant. Then I went on to buying some other properties using the equity we had in the house, and I bought a couple of properties which I rented out as stu student accommodation. And again, I got ripped off by the government because the government took all one of my houses to rent out to refugees. But that's another story, it's another video. So life is a learning curve and you learn from everything that you do. So shortly after um, buying these houses, things started to go wrong and my ex-wife, um, she decided she didn't want to be with me anymore. Uh, I was, at the end of the day, I was working seven days a week with four different jobs. And um, yes, we had a lot of debt because we took the mortgages on the houses and I was just about to buy my fourth house. And she said, I can't live with you anymore doing this. So at the time, I had uh, two beautiful daughters and I said, OK, I'll change. I'll sell everything that we've got. Um, I said, I'll just be the firefighter because that was my full time job being a firefighter. And I said, I'll give up everything to be with you and the kids. I said, but, because then we'll have no money, or we'll have very little money, you will have to go back to work. Did you like that solution? No, because you didn't ever, ever want to go back to work. So divorce number two came along, um, and we got divorced, and that's when I fell from grace, because getting divorced for the second time, I had the four jobs, we were earning a lot of money, although we had a lot of debt and a lot of money going out. So she tried to, to get as much 
financial support off me to her that she could manage to get because I was earning a lot of money and the courts were looking into the fact that I was earning a lot of money so therefore my financial support was going to be a lot to my ex-wife and my two children. I had no problems paying for financial support for my children. But what I did object to was that the more I worked, the more she got, and she wasn't going to go back to work anyway because she was on benefits, and the benefit system provided her with a certain amount of money that she could afford to live on. And again, another long story short, I was working full-time as a firefighter. She wasn't working, and she was on £300 a month more than me. So, you know, does that say for people to work your hardest and, you know, you're going to be rewarded. Sometimes, you know, it, life just goes against you. But I took it on the chin, and after taking it on the chin, obviously I had a certain amount of debts, which then comes on to my third, the beauty of failure. And believe it or not, this is the biggest failure that I had, and I, the worst I've ever felt in all my life with regard to my situation. But in retrospect, it's the biggest learning curve and it's the biggest thing that I ever learned. And because of going through the divorce on the second marriage, um, I ended up going through bankruptcy because all of the mortgage mortgages, because I wasn't working in the other jobs, because if I worked in the other jobs, then the maintenance people would have took a lot more money off me as well. And I decided, no, no, I've supported you and the kids for a number of years, over 10 years, why should I work my socks off to be able to give you extra money? No, I'm just going to be a firefighter and I'm just going to live on the money that I earn as a firefighter. So one thing led to another and I ended up going through bankruptcy. So I lost absolutely everything and it was my financial advisor that advised me to go bankrupt at the time because at the end of the day I had nothing, so I had nothing to lose. <clears throat> and I remember the days if it was yesterday because I was gutted here was sort of on my way to making a lot of money so our financial security when I got to 50 year old would have been fantastic and here I am now going through bankruptcy <clears throat> so yes it hurt it was a big lesson but the lesson I learned from that was the fact that at the time one of my best friends knew I was going through a hard time and convinced me to come, come to Thailand so at first I rejected it and said no, no I'm not coming to Thailand but then he persuaded me to come. And here I am, I've been living in Thailand now for over 10 years. And the biggest lesson I learned from going bankrupt, when I came to Thailand, I seen that there was many, many people happy with nothing living over here in Thailand, or many, many happy people with very, very little. They lived on what they had, and basically in Thailand, it's called the land of smiles and many, many people are happy over here with nothing. Here I am now at my wife's farm. Now my wife's mum and dad are sort of the salt of the earth people and they work incredibly hard and ask for nothing. But they live a happier lifestyle than I ever could have done in the UK. They have their own farm, they're virtually self-sufficient excuse the dog and the motorbike, we're living in a rural location. Discovering that you don't have to have the best of everything to live a happier life. And when I retired, I travelled around the world for two years, which opened my eyes up with regard to not staying in one place and being able to move around. Memories in your head are much more valuable than zeros in your bank book. So here I am now living in Thailand on half the amount of money that I used to earn in the UK some 12 years ago. And now I'm living on 1,200 pounds a month living here in Thailand and I live a much more healthier and happier lifestyle than I ever could afford in the UK. So that's the beauty of failure. It's turning what's failed into a positive outcome and learning from the failures and moving on from that. It can be done, anybody can do it. So from Les, retired and living the dream, learn from your mistakes and move on with your life. Bye for now.